Hi, and thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be cleaning up the last bits of lesson 9-4. We're going to be mostly focusing on differentiating inverse trig. To motivate that, we're going to be using one last example from last time, a little more abstract. So, given that y equals arc sine x, find cosine y, cosy. So, again, the idea here is that y is an angle. The output of arc sine is an angle, just like the output of arc cosine in this last example was an angle. So, this, that's the ratio. And you're like, x isn't a ratio. Well, x equals x over 1 is a ratio. Which ratio is it? Well, since it's sine, we're talking about opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to build a triangle. There's my right angle. My hypotenuse is 1, and my opposite side is x. I should have labeled my angle. I always put my angle right here. It's my default position. You don't have to. It could be up here. Same principles apply. So we have this situation. Here's my angle. That's supposed to be a Y. There's my opposite side. There's my hypotenuse. Wow. There's my hypotenuse. <laughs> Cosine Y is supposed to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now I already have the hypotenuse. So we need to find this adjacent side. Let's call it... A for adjacent. Why not? So how can we find these sides? So we're just going to make a Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus X squared should equal 1 squared. 1 squared is 1. We're solving for A squared. You can go ahead and try it out. You should be able to do it. It's a little weird because we're solving for A, the adjacent side. 1 minus X squared. And a equals plus or minus square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, the same argument applies from the last example. You might already have it on your paper right up here. It's where I drew it last time. Quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. Arc sine is only in these two quadrants. So this adjacent side can't be the negative one. We can't be here. We can't have our triangles sticking out this way. Okay? They have to go this way. They have to be in quadrants one and two. That's just how arc sine works. So we're going to exclude the negative domain, domain arc sine. And this is not a, it should be the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if that's sine, if sine, arc sine of x is y, cosine y, cosy, is this adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Or just, hmm. So that's pretty nice. Now, it's kind of abstract. It's important. You should be able to carry that argument out on your own. But the main reason we're doing it is for this example, 9. So, use your work to find a derivative of arc sine. Now, you could cheat and look ahead, but where's the fun in that? So, it seems a little abstract. Here's my idea. If y equals arc sine x, we can use inverses to get sine of y equals x. And then implicit differentiation. Can you please try implicit differentiation for me? If you get stuck, watch a little bit more of the video. But everyone should be pausing the video and trying this out on their own. Please, 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 please. It's too late in the year to defy me. Uh, all right. Three, two, one. What's the derivative of sine? 
the derivative of sine is cosine. We keep the inside the same, and we multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of y? dy dx. Hmm. What's the derivative of x? 1. That's all it takes. Implicit differentiation, we're supposed to solve for dy dx. So we'll say dy dx equals 1 over cosine y. So I found we wanted, sorry, I guess it's just said that. We want dyx, and we found dy dx, except it's not in terms of x. But wait, use your work from example 8. So we're going to try to replace it and tie everything together. So dy dx equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, you don't have to be able to do that every single time. The reason is because you're going to memorize this. This needs to be memorized. It's on the table on the very next page. You need to memorize them so you don't have to do this again. Because if you had to do this again, you are going to not do well. Furthermore, some of the more interesting integrals we'll ever do will look like this. And you need to know where this came from. It came from arc sine. Why did it come from arc sine? Because of what we just did. Okay? That's it. That was all. It's not that bad. It's just slick. It's just clever. Too clever. Again, as always, all you have to know here is the chain rule versions. Why are they the chain rule versions? Because the hook on's already there. If you know derivative, derivatives at all, you know the chain rule versions. Hook on, hook on, hook on. That side's important. You should be able to recognize them. It follows the same derivative rules as trig did. The derivative of the cosine one is the negative version of sine. Okay, that's helpful to know. Um, and this is it, the final three. We're all done. This is it. I'm so sad. Now there's just integration left, unfortunately, because you guys all like derivatives raw, right? All right, so we're just going to apply them. So it's 1 over the square root, 1 minus x squared. Cosine is just the negative version of sine. These two are more important than cosine. These two are way more important than cosine. Arctan is 1 over 1 plus u squared. This is why arctan is so beautiful. Arctan doesn't have a nasty square root in the bottom. It's plus, it's not minus. No square root. I mean, look at it. Isn't it prettier than its other guys? Way prettier. Way nicer. Way more beautiful. Best function ever. Valeria. All right. So memorize these two most. Memorize those two the most. You should know this one. You probably could just guess it right, to be honest, if you knew this one. Let's try some out. This is going to be a really short video. But the other one would have been way too long. And this is what you're going to have to come back to, not the other one. So g of y equals arctan of 2y plus 1. Minus 1. <laughs> Differentiate. You should try these out. They're not that bad. Just take a second to try them out. See what you get. 3, 2, 1. Did you write g prime of y? You should feel a little bit uh, embarrassed if you didn't. So that's u. This stuff is the u. That's the inside bit. So we're going to do 1 over. Sorry, not 1 over. It's like log. That's another thing I would say here. These are a lot like log. They all make fractions. So you over the original guy. Squared plus one. No, not green, I guess. So all this part came from the derivative rule. That's why these are more complicated. That's why we're doing these at the very end. That part's all part of the rule, 
right? One plus u squared, we square all of u. We could write it like this, if you really want to be pedantic, like that. If you really want to be very specific in particular, like this. I could have written one plus first, it's okay. And then on the top should be the derivative of u. What's the derivative of 2y minus 1? Just 2, since we're differentiating with respect to y. It should not be 2 dy dx. Careful. So, next. Try this one out. It's not that bad. It looks bad. It's not that bad. 3, 2, 1. f prime of x equals... So a lot of stuff for arc sine comes along with the ride. Arc sine is uglier for a lot of reasons. We have a square root automatically. Square root is too tiny. We have a 1 minus. We're going to square something. And what we're going to square is u. We're going to square the input. What's inside of arc sine? It's root x. What's the derivative of root x? Hopefully, some of you have memorized it by now. It's 1 over 2 root x. Now, if you haven't memorized that, you could have written 1 half x to the negative 1 half. That's fine. That's fine. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I'm going to simplify this. This would be fine. This is fine on the test, but you should know how to simplify it for the next thing we do. It's important, follow along. You want to try to simplify it on your own, that'd be a good idea. So, the first thing I notice might be that this is getting squared, but it also is that there's a lot of funky stuff going on in the bottom that I want to move to the real bottom. I don't like fraction over a fraction. I don't like negative exponents on top. So I'm going to rewrite this with a 1 on top, 2, x to the 1 half power, then the square root 1 minus x. But x to the 1 half power is root x, right? And it's pretty clear, uh, I almost complimented myself, it's pretty clever, it's pretty interesting that you could get this. Let's just say it that way. We're going to do stuff like this repeatedly. Again, this is important, but only in the broad strokes. I want to see you writing stuff like this. This is what we're focusing on in this lesson. I'm showing you this to work on your algebra skills, your fraction skills, etc. Last chance to practice. Do what you practicing earlier. Did you not listen to me? Did you not pause? Try this one out then. Here's your last chance. Look, I'm almost ready to write. Three, two, one. Did you pause it? Did you try it? Arc cosine is a lot like its brother, arc sine. It's a really straight line for a little bit. Sadness. One minus somebody squared. And that somebody is going to be natural log. The guy who's inside arc cosine. Sorry, I should have written arc cosine has a negative. That's why it's annoying. That's why it's the worst one. Arc tan is 100% the best one. Arc sine is 100% the worst one. And then we want to have the derivative of natural log t. What's the derivative of natural log t? Did you get it? Were you that quick? 1 over t. Very important. Don't like how I wrote it. <sighs> 1 over t. <laughs> Better. That's it. Just have to get used to this. You have to get used to this because like I said in 9-3, most of the rules in 9-5 are going to come from integrating stuff that looks like this. If you don't understand what we just did, you are not going to do well on the Unit 9 test. You have to understand basic trig. You have to understand inverse trig. Get to work. Finish the homework, have a lot of fun, ask me questions, ask your friend questions. Only the smart friends, though. You guys have a great day. Have a great night. 
Good luck. Bye-bye.